Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research. I'm here at the Cisco stand at Mobile World Congress 2025 in Barcelona. I'm joined today by Vishayan, your uh, global, uh, your uh, server provider sales for the Asia Pac region, and uh, Darish Malotra uh, on the CX team for Asia Pac. Right. right. So, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, easily the industry's largest telecom show. Yes. Uh, I think uh, it, I, I like coming to the show because. It is, while it's in Europe, it is a global show. Uh, I was excited to talk to you, gentlemen, because you're both from the Asia Pac region. And, uh, uh, Vish, let's start with you. Just uh, when you think about telcos and transformation, right? We've been talking about telecom transformation for, well, as long as I've been coming to the show. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really, right? nice. And uh, we're, within your region, where are we with, with telco transformation? Hey, look, I think if you ask me, I think the last couple of years, uh, I think if I look at the show this year, every Telco CEO or CXO I speak to is really more upbeat. And the reason for that is I think the telcos have started to see that by leveraging AI, they can use AI to transform their operations, but it's also a great source for monetization for them. Because I think this industry has been challenged in the last decade in revenue growth. And I think AI can actually help them monetize their infrastructure assets. Yeah, that's, um, uh, and I was going to say that too. I think the mood from the service providers I've talked to here is generally positive and more positive than they say in a long time. And I do think they believe there is some opportunity from AI. Um, and what do you think those are though? Because when you think of AI, I mean, it's a pretty vast array of things uh, that it can do. What would the, what would the service provider role be in that? Beautiful question. So I think that I see the role of AI in three areas for service providers. The first area is around customer experience. And I think if you really look, we spoke about the NPS course of different service providers. Yeah, they're not very good. Yes, yeah. I think that's an operation that AI can help them transform. And that can help them monetize that customer experience. Because once you get to understand what it is, and then continuously work towards it. The first one is around customer experience. The second one is around network experience. So really look at what will AI drive. I think the real opportunity for operators is they have B2B businesses and they have B2C consumers. And I think if you can just think of like, if I look at operators across Asia and I look at a sports event, and I think if they want to see a video stream, for example, for IPL, and it's going to be consistent as they travel, I think consumers are willing to pay involving. Okay. So how can you use your experience and provide a more monetizable, differentiated experience is another source for revenue growth for them. And I think the last one, if I really look at it, is around the service stack and the service experience. So I think obviously AI will help them transform their existing services, make them better, but that it also opens up a whole range of new services that leverage that core DNA, which is around connectivity. So as, as you look at all of these large AI farms that enterprises and public sector need to build, needs a very differentiated connectivity experiences. So I feel these are the three areas, customer experience, network experience, and service experience, where AI will be leveraged on both sides of the equation. Cost, reducing that cost per bit, but also increasing that. And all three of those things go hand in hand, really. Yes, so, absolutely. So on customer experience, uh, now let's uh, um, uh, talk about that. So CX at Cisco is the services organization and, right. and customer success. Uh, how are you, and I know Cisco takes a very collaborative approach to it, right? Uh, how are you working with that audience and service providers to help them with the transformation initiatives? Great question to be honest. And, and I think so, if I look at, you know, whenever we are talking to our service providers, the big things or the big challenges what they face at the moment as part of the transformation is the complexity. Because yeah. the networks have evolved from 2G to 3G, then 4G, 5G, virtualization, cloud providers, how to really manage the, that entire complexity. So that's one area. The second area they are actually right now challenged by is the security. Because the, the, the number of touch points, okay, have become so many 
that security is becoming a massive issue. So for us as, as customer experience, it's extremely important that we really work closely with these customers. We bring the right capabilities to LinkedIn. And as, as an organization, we've actually significantly investing in capabilities around bringing the right architects who can look at holistically at the network, bringing the capabilities on AI and automation, which we just talked about, which is super important as we move forward. And also the security skills. Because unless we have that, we will not be able to support our customers in the same way as we want them to, our, us to support them and how they want us to support them. And this is super critical if you ask me as they move to the next stage of their digital transformation. Yeah, and so if you think about the three areas that Vish outlined, uh, customer Spin, experience, network experience, network experience and service, service experience. Service. Uh, from a from a Cisco CX perspective, yeah. um, are you spending uh, you know more time in one of those three areas than the others, or is it pretty equally spaced across them? I say at the moment, uh, if we used to spend a lot more time, I'll say, on the network experience side. We yeah. still spend a reasonably good amount of time, and that's really the core business. Okay, that makes sense, okay. right? And that is super critical. But at the same time, in addition to that, we've actually started spending more or shifting our time towards the service experience because this is increasingly becoming important as you earlier said it's not just the cost play cost can only get to a certain level it is about how we can truly support our service providers to increase the revenue side of it and become a trusted 360 relationship partner with them where we are not only supporting the, the infrastructure but also supporting the growth on the revenue sum. Yeah. And of course, now with the third area, which is the customer experience, okay, and I think so, with, with what AI is able to bring in, the kind of insights AI is able to bring in, you know, as we build more and more capabilities and use cases there, that'll be another area where we'll, we'll actually start partnering with them and they can form. Yeah, now on the AI theme, um, it's an interesting topic because, I mean, you go out the show floor and there's AI everywhere, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of excitement about it, but I think from a service provider perspective, there's also a lot of trepidation. They're not sure how to deploy it, yeah. you know, what jobs come in, what jobs go. And so how is the CX organization helping your customers overcome that fear of AI to help them be able to accelerate their journey down that and thereby get to the things that Pish talked about? So, so you're right, okay, in terms of AI, one is, of course, the investments when you're going to make in AI, how do you monetize that investment? Okay. What else they are able to bring? So one on AI is clearly a play where which, which can help them become much more cost, more cost efficient. That's one okay. thing. Second is how AI can enable them be enhance their speed to market. That'll be the other one. Okay. And third is how do it actually enhances their, their service experience as well. Okay. So these are the areas where we are actually working in collaboration, I have to say, because AI is a massive field, and you would have seen some announcements which we recently did yeah. with some of the providers as well, where we are actually working with some of the other providers like AMD or other partnerships with NVIDIA as well, okay, and bringing, bringing the operators in there as well to ensure we have a truly collaborative system to, to, to really start working on the use cases and the services which we can actually help monetize. And we already see that happening in in few of the, the service providers. And I'm sure there is so much here to come in the next few years. We just need to be ready with the right capabilities. We just need to be ready to work in a collaborative and a trusted fashion as a partnership. Because here, we will need partnership to make it successful. Yeah, Navish, um, I think there's a certain responsibility from Cisco being... Uh, having been a core supplier of infrastructure to not just in your but globally. Yes. Right. And I know at this show, Cisco made a number of announcements. Uh, there was some thousand eyes news. There was uh, agile services. So can you talk about the major announcements? That you I mean, yeah. So look, I think if you really look at it, I think we had an agile services uh, uh, a launch uh, in Cisco Live India. Yeah. And it's really about transforming the operating construct for our service providers in the way they operate and manage their network. So 
and then we had an announcement around thousand eyes. And I think the way it all I com- really thought that was exciting. Yeah. So yeah. the way it comes together, I think the real challenge today is providing end-to-end assurance. And when you have end-to-end service assurance, and you're able to correlate false events and get to the root cause quickly, and this is where agentic AI really comes to the fore. And I think it's these innovations that will help us deliver a better network experience and a better customer experience. So these innovations that we are bringing to the market is really helping the operational agility and helping our customers deliver a better outcome to their businesses and their consumers. Yeah, in fact, the thousand eyes connected devices um, uh, announcement I thought in particular was very interesting because typically, and so if you're not familiar with that is, um, thousand eyes agents are now being embedded on home devices, yes. on mobile phones, things yes. like that. And typically, from a service provider perspective, they have insight into maybe the cable modem yes. or the Wi-Fi access point. It, it, some, it, maybe, yes, yes. unless the person has yes, their own. Yes, yes. But now, if somebody calls and says their Netflix isn't working properly, well, yes. they can actually tell it's a problem with the TV or something, right? And so now, from a vantage point perspective, the service provider can look in the home, what's going on in the network, all the way out to the internet, if yes. they want, using Thousand Eyes. Yes. Yeah. And so imagine, I think, just look at, just let's imagine the possibilities moving forward. Yeah. Is as soon as you get a call from a consumer, I think if you can have the logic when he's getting to an agent, go and understand what's really happening in his home and really figure out is this this problem. I think those are the new kind of use cases that we can uh, help our service providers and that will improve the NPS for our consumers and yeah. for our customers. So I think that's how we see this role of these technologies in transforming the customer experience. Yeah, a lot of excited stuff coming. So yes. uh, so let's wrap up with one question each. Uh, I'll ask you both the same question. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the world of telecom and service provider. We have AI. I think customers are moving stuff back to, uh, you know, on-prem. So there's more network traffic being moved around. Uh, and so there's a lot to consider. So what's one piece of advice you'd give service providers as they go through their transformation? So I think for service providers, I think it's a service monetization. And I think today, I think when I look at it, I think service providers have wonderful network operation centers and knock. But I think the future for them is in leveraging security, observability, alongside their core communication services. So I think if by enabling this level of service agility and having a service stack, I think they can really play on the part that I think where we need to see more innovation in this decade is to monetize those experiences and providing secure AI experiences in the marketplace. All right. So don't forget the monetization part. Yes. And Darsh, you get last word. Uh, give, yeah. give us a piece of advice here. No, I, you know, of course, we've already covered the monetization side yeah. of it. I will say in terms of for, for us, I will say, you know, as we are bringing the right capabilities, okay, we just want our service providers to continue to closely engage with us, okay? Because this is where we want to differentiate, because we want to drive outcomes in line with their strategy. We want to drive more proactive, predictable, you yeah. know, that, that kind of outlook. So, yeah. with this kind of trusted partnerships, I believe we can help them enhance both the network experience, which is super critical, because at the end of the day, that has been their bread and butter. And also, support them in helping monetize and go to market faster. So this will be my other advice and and a request yeah. that how do we work continue to work uh-huh. alone, yeah. closely and collaborate. Well I will say whatever you do is working. I was I uh, I was talking with the CTO of one of the European operators the other day and they said that uh, the engagement with Cisco is uh, the best it's been in over a decade, so uh, congrats on that. Oh, Thank you. So, yeah, so yeah. happy to hear that. And as you said in the Perfect. beginning as well, we see the momentum, we yeah. see the positiveness, okay, because we, I've been coming here for the last 10 years, excepting the in-between COVID period. Yeah. But what I see this year in terms of talking to our, uh, our top service providers is something amazing is happening, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thanks uh, uh, Thank for you. joining me. And so it seems like uh, at least the opportunity for the service providers to be back is there. Let's see if they capitalize now. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so uh, on behalf of Vish 
and Darvish. I'm Zia Scaravalla from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, hit that like button and also the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. I'm the next episode of ZCast.